Today we'll see features of Java. And you know Java is one of the powerful programming language. And what sort of features are available for Java we'll see. Now here there is a list of features like simple, object oriented, portable, platform independent, secured, architecture neutral, interpreted, high performance, multi-threaded, distributed and dynamic. Now we'll see one by one. Now why Java is simple? One is Java is based on C++. There is nothing but it has been derived. The syntax and the object oriented concepts from C++. So if we have some prior knowledge in C++, then Java will be simple. Then second point says that Java does not support pointers because there was a problem with the pointers when you see C++ and C programming that is memory leakage problem. We do allocate the memory and if we don't deallocate the memory by writing the external code then the memory leakage occurs. So that is a very crucial problem and uh, that particular problem has been removed by introducing a concept called garbage collection. As you can see, it has been listed in third point. Garbage collection is a process where the memory for the unused Java objects will be released automatically by the garbage collector. So here we need not write any extra code for releasing of the memory for the unused objects. And uh, operator overloading is also a bit removed where by using operator overloading, the performance overhead has been increased because we need to find out what sort of operators are being uh, available and what sort of meaning for each and every operator. So it is a little bit uh, time taking process. So the overhead has been increased for the operator overloading concept. So that is also been not applicable in Java. Then coming to the next one, object oriented. Now Java is based on the concepts of class and objects. Now when we say classes, what are the contents of classes that we need to understand? The class holds the instance variables or the variables what we write inside the class are called instance variables and objects. And then not only the instance variables, along with that we do have some called methods. We, we used to call functions in C and C++. Now it has been replaced with methods. So we can simply define the class as a collection of instance variables and methods. Now in order to call these instance variables or access the instance variables and methods, we require some source. So that source is nothing but an object. Through objects, we can call the instance variables and methods. And here everything in Java has been considered as an object because the object is holding some memory for the instance variables what we are trying to define. And as I said, uh, the object oriented programming concepts have been derived from C++ such as encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Encapsulation is nothing but wrapping up of data that is instance variables and methods into a single unit. The best example is a class. Then inheritance acquiring the properties of the base class to subclass or super class to subclass. And the polymorphism is nothing but uh, the ability of doing a task in many ways. Like the same method name we need to take and uh, the parameters can be variating. So instead of taking different different uh, names for the methods, I can take a single name and uh, in order to make a differentiation among the functions, we need to give the different types of parameters where the data types can be different. And when we talk about inheritance, the best feature is reusability. Whatever the superclass properties are being available, the same thing can be reused by the subclasses without rewriting. And the subclasses can add their own functionalities like parent and child relationship. Now coming to the third one, portable. Now here I can uh, transfer the files 
generally when we develop an application in one operating system and when you compile your program you get a dot plus file the dot plus file contains something called byte codes and these byte codes are not the actual machine code now once we develop these byte codes on one system i can just copy or transfer these byte codes into any other operating system which is nothing but platform we can directly run the particular byte codes with the help of the java virtual machine and there is no need of recompilation because the byte codes are already compiled that byte codes need to be interpreted by the java virtual machine so it's very easy to transfer the files from system to system and directly go for execution a platform independent as i was saying the dot class file is going to hold the byte codes and uh, it need to be executed on multiple platforms so such as windows linux mac operating systems and any other operating system which holds the compatible java development kit software can interpret this dot class file so you can see the same dot class file has been given to the mac os jvm linux jvm and windows jvm based on their operating systems the compatible software need to be available in system and they can directly run you get the same output now that's the best advantage what you can get because now the complete thing is internet world we cannot predict that uh, what is uh, uh, end systems platform is it could one system could be windows or the other system can be a particular linux system or mac operating system so here the application need to be executed on any platform now that is a concept behind the platform independent concept now java is holding a feature called secure now here basically the application runs with the virtual machine now virtual machine is one of the secure entity where it is going to scan the byte codes properly for uh, and search for malicious code which is a if it is available into the byte codes or not if everything is safe then the virtual machine will be executing the output now there is something called java security model or we call it as a sandbox security model now in jdk 1.0 and 1.1 onwards the security model has been uh, introduced where i can say that uh, whatever the code which is been uh, interpreted as a malicious code that they are going to keep into a separate area called sandbox that means that particular code will not have access to any of the system resources it could be client or server whatever uh, the system the resource cannot be accessed by the code which is malicious so they keep into the sandbox model and later on they are going to delete the particular code and as i said there is no use of pointers because uh, there was some memory leakage problem so introducing uh, by introducing the garbage collection we can uh, go for avoiding the memory leakage problem so there is no pointers concept here then one more uh, feature is uh, the exception handling because ultimately we need to cache the exceptions and we need to provide the appropriate message where the client understands what type of exception it is so that they can rectify so we have a mechanism called exception handling that supports in order to handle the exceptions and give the proper error message to the end user then here the byte code makes java safer because the jvm is trying to interpret the byte code and the byte code is already compiled code and still any malicious code is existing that can be removed by the jvm then secure attack protection so there could be a number of attacks when you work with internet then obviously there is there is a security manager which can give some uh, security protection mechanisms so that uh, some types of attacks can be reduced then we call then the next feature is architecture neutral now here java byte code can be executed on any processor even though you have a low level processor in your uh, system still the java byte code can be executed so there is no need of hi fi process to be available in order to execute the java byte code so you, even though you got a you go for a celtron or you go for intel the same 
performance will be given and uh, not depend on the underlying hardware and operating system so as i said it's platform independent it is uh, not binded with any operating system or not the any underlying hardware so you can use any type of system then interpreted java byte codes are converted into machine specific code by the java virtual machine so byte codes are not machine code byte codes are only the intermediate code and the intermediate code need to be converted to the actual machine code because I don't know when we use uh, which type of systems. I might use one time Linux, the other time the Mac operating system, other time the Windows operating system, but still I need to see that my Java code get executed. So here you need to have a separate JVM, which is compatible to your Windows. Maybe it's compatible to your Linux. It could be compatible to your Mac operating system. Then once it has been configured properly, then you can execute directly without recompilation. Now, one more feature is high performance. Now, this JVM has a just in time compiler where it is going to take the block of byte cores and convert into the machine code. And there only it is going to check for the malicious codes. And uh, block by block, the compilation of the byte cores has been done and converts it to the machine. Then, efficient memory management. Now here the programs are being using the heap memory and uh, what are the memories been uh, required or requested for the execution the heap memory from the heap memory we can take and uh, go for uh, execution of the programs. Then multi-threaded support. Java supports multi-threading where number of threads can be run parallelly so that it can uh, execute much more faster because if you go for individual you know like one process it takes a lot of time but if you can split the process into threads then obviously your execution is much more faster where it is leading to high performance then as a platform independent you can run the programs on any operating system and we get the same results and here the robust standard library video has a lot of packages a lot of packages if you want to go for networking, you can go for, you can go for input output, you can go for uh, the applets, you can go for swings, you can go for internet applications, GUIs. Okay, then you can go for collections, you can go for uh, native code generation by using JNI packages. So there is a huge sort of standard libraries are available so that you can develop any type of application. Then as I said, one of the best features is multi-threaded. And now there is a differentiation what you need to understand between a process and thread. Now process is nothing but a program which is under execution. And if you go for a process, it is a sequential execution. And uh, when you go for sequential execution, no, it is taking a lot of time. So why can't we go for the parallel execution? So what we do generally here is the process need to be splitted into threads. That's the reason I can call a thread is a part of process. And these threads are lightweight, where minimum task is given for the particular thread so that it can execute and minimum number of resources we are going to allocate for that. So in that sense, the thread is lightweight. And each thread is given some task and uh, all the threads are going to start their execution at the same point of time. But uh, the ending point we may not predict because it depends on the type of job as well as the size of the job what you're going to allocate for the thread maybe the shorter uh, task thread is being expected first that uh, implies uh, that means uh, we are not going to give it as a final output still we need to wait and uh, still the particular threads need to wait till all the threads completing their job, then only I can give the final output. Then faster execution of the application can be done because uh, threads are running parallelly. Then it shares the same memory area of the process because when you execute your application, the program is going to be allocated uh, or a process is going to allocate some memory. And how many threads you want to divide, it depends on the memory allocated for the particular process. We cannot use other uh, process memory. So we need to share the memory 
allocated for the process among the threads. Then we have distributed. We can develop distributed applications. As I said, uh, internet applications can be developed by using Java or enterprise applications can be developed. Then uh, it is easy to access and transfer files to any machine connected to the internet. Then uh, remote method invocation is used to create distributed applications in Java. So remote method implies like uh, the methods whatever need to be invoked is not available in your system. It be, they are available in some other system, but still I can invoke those methods and the execution is done at the remote system, but output is sent back to you. It's called a RMI technology. So that has been part of Java so that we can develop the distributed applications. Then one more feature is dynamic. Now any point of time I want to load a class, but try to load a class at runtime. So then and there, you just identify what type of classes you want and uh, go for uh, loading the particular classes for execution. Similarly, at runtime, we can call the methods also, which is called a dynamic method invocation. Then uh, the garbage collection, we need to decide what sort of objects are not in use right now. And we need to uh, drop out the particular objects at runtime. Then I can go for integrating uh, this Java with any other languages like C, C++ or some other language also I can integrate and I can develop the applications. So these are some of the features of Java which is making uh, this Java programming language powerful. Thank you.